hello and welcome to this video tutorial on drainage patterns it all begins from the drainage basin and a drainage basin is simply the area that is drained by a river and its tributaries so we say that in a drainage basin the river and the tributaries they are forming a certain Pattern. So we are saying that the area drained by a river and its tributaries, we look at the river, we look at the tributaries, and we realize that these are they are forming a certain pattern. Let's look at a drainage basin, which I mean a drainage pattern, because it is this pattern which we are focusing on in this tutorial. So a drainage pattern is the layout which is formed by a river and its tributaries in a drainage basin remember drainage basin is just the surface of the earth the area which is being drained by a river and its tributaries so as the rivers flow they usually form a certain pattern so this pattern is what you are calling a, a drainage pattern so we come up and now we look at how many and which are these things we are calling drainage patterns but before that let's look at a simple drainage pattern where we have a river and its tributaries and we say that that area which marks the drainage basin is called a watershed it is the air the point which separates a drainage basin from another and here inside this watershed we have the drainage basin so next thing you want to dive into the pattern which is formed by this uh, river and its tributaries and these different patterns are what we are referring to as drainage patterns so the next thing here is to look into the different drainage patterns which can be found in different drainage basins the first and very common pattern is called the dendritic drainage pattern so what is a dendritic drainage pattern and what describes this type of a pattern we find that in this kind of a pattern the tributaries will usually join the main river in some manner so how do they join the main river they join the main river at acute angles so what we mean here these are angles which are less than 90 degrees so this is actually the most common drainage pattern in every other drainage basin so we say that let's look at um how it can be sketched or how it appears in that drainage basin so here we have the main river remember we said that the end point of a river is usually called the mouth of the river then the point at which the river begins is the source so as the river flows from the source to the mouth you can see how the tributaries are joining the main river even if a tributary is joining another tributary it is still joins in the same manner so what we are make uh, we are calling here is the acute angle then eh? you can see the angles which are less than 90 degrees and this kind of a pattern is what we are calling the dendritic drainage pattern pattern number two is whereby these tributaries will now join in a different way so number two is known as a trellis drainage pattern so what is a trellis drainage pattern these are cases whereby now the tributaries in that drainage basin the tributaries will actually join the main river perpendicularly so they join the main river at right angles so 
I know you're wondering how can rivers just flow and join each other at right angles. This is usually informed by the rock structure, especially in areas where we have the, uh, the, 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 the cracked rock structure. So we find that if this is the source of the river, and uh, then it is flowing all the way to the mouth, the mouth of course is the end point, then we realize that the first tributary, the second tributary, even if it's a tributary to a tributary, they are joining in such a manner that those tributaries are joining the main river at right angles, roughly right angles. And this is what we call the trellise drainage pattern. So we have the main river, we have the tributary there, and then this gives us another drainage pattern. That's the trellise drainage pattern. Um, we have now covered two drainage patterns. We proceed and look at another drainage pattern. Number three, interestingly, we have a drainage pattern known as parallel drainage pattern. And even from the name itself, you can tell how this drainage pattern appears. So this, we are saying that it appears or occurs in areas where several streams or several rivers flow parallel to each other. Parallel means they are flowing adjacent or next to each other. And when they are flowing next to each other, they may join downstream. So we're saying that the tributaries may join the main river downstream or the, uh, the two rivers may just flow all the way to the mouth. So we say that uh, they are still flowing parallel to the main river, but they may join. It can also happen where we have two drainage patterns flowing into the same direction. So let's see how we can sketch these and get to know the actual look of the parallel drainage basin. So this is one of the rivers flowing in this direction. And then we see a tributary which is flowing parallel to it until it joins it downstream. Another tributary is flowing parallel and they're joining downstream. But we can also have another river or other stream adjacent to this one still flowing the same direction but the tributaries are flowing at joining downstream. So this gives us the parallel drainage pattern. Then we have now covered three uh, drainage patterns. We can now move and look at the fourth drainage pattern. So number four, we have another interesting drainage pattern. So what is the name of this drainage pattern? Here we have the centripetal drainage pattern. The good thing is that the names of this drainage pattern can give you a hint of how they look and how they work. So centripetal, here from the word center, this whereby several rivers, several streams, they will flow into um, the same destination. When you say a destination, you mean actually the same uh, basin, the same water point, the same uh, end point, but they are from different directions. This happens when we have, for example, uh, rivers flowing into a lake. So they are from different directions, but that lake basin is where the rivers are flowing into. So we are saying that several rivers flowing to the same destination or basin from different directions. And then we are giving the example of rivers which are flowing 
into a lake so let's sketch this and see how it can happen so assume this is a lake and then we are saying that from different directions a river and its tributaries they are flowing into the same same lake this one is giving us the centripetal the lake is at the center and then the rivers and the tributaries are flowing are draining their waters into that lake this one gives us now the centripetal drainage pattern i know somebody is already thinking of what about the next pattern what if the rivers are flowing outwards from the same lake what if the lake was the source of all the rivers now let's look at it this one will form the radial drainage pattern so what is a radial drainage pattern here is the opposite of centripetal drainage pattern so what do we see we find that this occurs or happens where rivers and streams the tributaries they are flowing outwards they are flowing outwards from a common flowing outwards from a common point how can this happen for example we can have rivers flowing from a hill from a mountain so if the mountain is the catchment area for different rivers then this will form a radial drainage pattern so we have um, it appearing like this i want to take the case of if rivers are flowing from a mountain or a hill and we can draw these uh, uh using some contours though i've not labeled the contours of course the middle part is the hill so we see that from the hill perhaps there are some melting glaciers the rivers are just flowing outwards flowing outwards from that hill the rivers the tributaries flowing out this will form now the radial drainage pattern this happens whereby we have a mountain which is uh, ice capped we can have um, mountains with ice and then the melting of the ice or the glaciers lead to streams which flow outwards in all directions from the mountain and then we say that area is forming a radial drainage pattern good um we are about to finish the types of drainage patterns and now we we'll look at other drainage patterns other means we we have, we have only uh, one other pattern which is not very common and uh, this is known as the fault guided drainage pattern a fault guided drainage pattern just like the name suggests remember i say that the names will give you the meaning of these drainage patterns so fault guided drainage pattern these are case whereby we find these in areas that have undergone faulting remember faulting is simply the fracturing of the crustal rocks so where we have faulting then the rivers and the streams in that area will tend to flow uh, in accordance or along or following the fault lines of the land then we say that drainage pattern is known as fault guided it only happens in an area which has undergone faulting especially the area of the rift valley in a short summary this is what we have covered in this video tutorial we have the following drainage patterns dendritic drainage pattern we have also looked at the trellis drainage pattern we have looked at the centripetal drainage pattern we have also looked at the radial drainage pattern and then actually you can be looking at this and you can pause uh, the video and see whether you can remember 
the diagrams, how they look like. In, uh, then we have also seen the fault guided drainage pattern and the parallel drainage pattern. These are the drainage patterns which we have covered in this video and all is done. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.